pieces of paper show through it. Fortunately, at about this time, new MMT test equipment offered potential exactly in this area, and with imaginative development work by the team at Black Mountain, and at relatively low cost, a completely new calibration technique has been developed. This doesn't require the frequently calibrated secondary standards or the range of test equipment that was previously needed, and will be much quicker. All bases have had for some time an its generator. This is a portable version of the Channel 4 PIP design, made by Link Electronics. The wave... <laughs> Sorry. bases have had for some time an its generator. This is a portable version of the Channel 4 PIP design made by Link Electronics. Because the waveforms in this generator are generated digitally from information in ROM, they are very stable and precise. As you might already know, the Black Mountain team's development work resulted in a modification that has been fitted to this equipment. This expands its capabilities to provide a range of distorted X waveforms, again digitally generated and therefore stable. These can be used not only for checking AMEs, but also for checking the operation of... <laughs> something like that. Sorry. Yes, I think I might be able to. As you might already know, the Black Mountain team's development work... Huh. Stop! Sorry. Stop! <laughs> oh, this is exciting, isn't it? Yeah. As you might already know, the Black Mountain team's development work resulted in a modification that's been fitted to these generators. This expands its capabilities to provide a range of distorted its waveforms, again digitally generated and therefore stable. These can be used not only for the calibration of AMEs, but also for checking the operation of other equipment, waveform correctors, for example. go through it again and go in, in this section. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, what, yeah. If we change the shot yeah, this time, we then yeah. with other pieces of material that will... Yes. Fortunately, at about this time... Do that again, because you guys Did I? We're going to start. Right. Any time? Fortunately, at about this time, new MMT test equipment offered potential exactly in this area. And with imaginative development work by the team at Black Mountain, and at relatively little cost, a completely new calibration technique has been developed. This doesn't require the frequently calibrated secondary standards 
or the range of test equipment that was previously needed and will be much quicker. All bases have had for some time an its generator. This is a portable version of the Channel 4 PIP design made by Link Electronics. Because the waveforms in this equipment are generated digitally from information in ROM, they are highly stable and precise. As you might already know, the Black Mountain team's development work resulted in a modification that's been fitted to these generators. This expands its capabilities to provide a range of distorted its waveforms, again digitally generated and therefore stable. These can be used not only for checking the calibration of AMEs, but also for checking the operation of other equipment. Waveform correctors, for example. Sorry, from, not from the beginning. Yes. Sorry? And on top. As you might already know, the, the Black Mountain team's development work resulted in a modification that's been fitted to these generators. This expands its capabilities to provide a range of distorted its waveforms, again digitally generated and therefore stable. These can be used not only for the calibration of AMEs, but also for checking the operation of other equipment, waveform correctors, for example. Bit of a hesitation at the beginning. As you might already know, the Black Mountain team's development work resulted in a modification that's been fitted to these generators. This expands its capabilities to provide a range of distorted its waveforms, again digitally generated and therefore stable. These can be used not only for checking the calibration of AMEs, but also for checking the operation of other equipment, waveform correctors, for example. Few weeks time when we visit an ILR studio uh, but the we should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks time when we visit an ILR studio but the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and channel 4 transmitters We should be taking another look at ILRs. Okay, camera's rolling now. We should be taking another look at ILR in a few weeks' time when we visit an. That's wrong. It's real. Okay, I'm rolling. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time when we visit an ILR studio. But the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time when we visit an ILR studio.
but the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters. Right, take this. Okay. Take to rolling. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time. Sorry, I. Right, take to rolling. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time when we visit an ILR studio. But the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time, when we visit an ILR studio. But the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters. We should be taking another look at ILR. God, sorry. Happy Christmas, VT. The camera is rolling. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time when we visit an ILR studio. But the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters. We should be taking another look at radio in a few weeks' time when we visit an ILR studio. But the prime purpose of this building is to house our ITV and Channel 4 transmitters.
Up here? No, there is better. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, yeah, the shop is down there. The transmitters are independent local radio are often situated at Transmitters for independent local radio are often located with UHF television stations. That's not right, is it? And situated at UHF television. Situated In addition to making greater use of our buildings, all right, all right. In addition to making greater use of our buildings, it also reduces the proliferation of masts and towers for the area. Right. Sorry. Speak again. Here we go. <laughs> Tough connection on there. The air, probably the aerial, if it's. Not the aerial? I think that's probably what it is because there's six over around batteries in there. No, it's uh, they're all going to make connections at the same time. Oh, yeah. They're not for it. Yeah. One in twelve chance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be able to cut it? The transmitters for independent local radio are often located with UHF television stations. Besides making greater, <laughs> in addition to, sorry. This is um, the reception role. Move that, move that forward, uh, Dave, somewhere. Just, just hover about within the square foot. Yes. I could almost be wired up permanently. I mean, it's only transmitting about to the pit. Yes, I'm doing that. The transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television stations. UHF television stations. In addition to making greater... Sorry, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, um, no, not right. for this one, though. No. Okay, well, right. No, just, just. Don't, don't I'll sway. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a patch. Sorry, let's push it again. Over there. I mean, good God. It's, it's not this a is ludicrous. Power problem. It's a standing wave, I think. Yeah, yeah. it could be in relation to RF. Yeah, probably um, is. Yeah. We, we can dump radio mic if you want this time. It's horrible. This I'd rather do that. You don't need okay. this shot. Um, you do it, Michael. Yes, Michael. Anything you say, Michael? We only need radio light for shots that we don't walk in. You know, we don't need it for this. The transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television stations. Pull this out. Yeah, you, you don't want any of that. You don't, uh, you don't want that microphone either, because I don't mm. know what that microphone is. It looks actually, it looks like an ECM50. It's the same as that. Yes. Yeah. Is it? Really?
It's an inside job again, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. I'll put that in your waist. I don't want any, thanks. The transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television stations. Besides making greater use of our buildings, this helps to reduce the proliferation of masts and towers for the aerials. The transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television stations. This helps. <laughs> the transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television transmitters. <laughs> That's wrong, isn't it? What I'll do is I'll check for five seconds after. Okay, camera's now rolling. The transmitters for independent local radio are often situated at UHF television stations. Besides making greater use of our buildings, this helps to reduce the proliferation of masts and towers for the aerials, which is extremely reliable due to its parallel and modular design. Here we have a solid state 2 kilowatt VHF stereo transmitter, which is extremely reliable due to its parallel and modular design. Right, that's fine. That is rolling and rolling. Here we have a solid state 2 kilowatt VHF stereo transmitter, which is very reliable due to its parallel modular design. The left and right hand sound channels from the studios are oh, normally connected to yeah, the left phone so music circuit so landline. Camera's rolling. The left and right hand sound channels from the studios are normally connected to the transmitter side by music circuit landlines and arrive at this jack field. The input to the station can be checked either with headphones or the monitor loudspeaker. Around the world and just around the corner, and what we'll be covering in two and a reports mm -hmm. at six o'clock this evening. Okay, so that was a bit wooden, wasn't it? Camera is rolling. The input to the station can be checked either with headphones or the monitor loudspeaker. Someone to carry out office duties to photocopier and facsimile machines, even a vacuum cleaner and all with no capital outlay. For details, phone, phone basing stuff. Ah. Camera is rolling. Camera is rolling. Camera is rolling. The input to the station can be checked either with headphones or the monitor loudspeaker. C682RTF, PJM193X. The input to the station can be checked with either headphones or the monitor loudspeaker.
the input to the station can be checked with either headphones or on the monitor loudspeaker. That is so nice, and it threw the storm at me. Sorry, it's a quiet sound. Just roll it. You want to turn that down? Yeah. Turn the rolling again. There is no music. Okay. On there. Well, you. The junior category of the festival. That's why. Do you want music or not? Nice rolling. It's all right. Right. Right, let's try again. <laughs> the input to the station can be checked either with headphones or on the monitor loudspeaker. If one of the inputs should fail, the transmission continues in mono. If both stereo input channels are lost, the VHF transmitter rebroadcasts the program from the standby receiver. Normally, the two sound channels are multiplexed by the encoder in the A drive the B drive being the standby in case of failure. The stereo signal then passes through various combiners and filters to the parallel power amplifiers, where the output level is metered before connection to the aerial feeder. Most VHF ILR transmissions are in mixed polarization. This provides the best overall perf I'll start that piece again. Yes, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Most VHF ILR transmissions are in mixed polarization. This provides the best overall reception on both vertically polarized aerials for car radios and portable receivers, which often have internal horizontal aerials. Rolling. Normally, the two sound tram. Sorry. You know what Doesn't matter. Normally, the two sound channels are multiplexed by the encoder in the A drive, the B drive being the standby in case of failure. Okay. Too late. Normally, the two sound channels are multiplexed by the encoder in the A drive, the B drive being the standby in case of failure. The stereo signal then passes through various combiners and filters to the parallel power amplifiers where the output level is metered before connection to the aerial feeder.
Hang on. The use of UHF for TV broadcasting requires... It's wrong, isn't it? Yes. No, thank you. No, no, no. It doesn't... Uh, The use of UHF for, for, sorry. The use of UHF for TV broadcasting requires 51 main stations and about 850 relays. Transmitter sites are shared with the BBC and the present four television channels are always transmitted from the same mast. The use of UHF for TV broadcasting requires 51 main stations and about 850 relays. Transmitter sites are shared with the BBC and the present four television channels are always transmitted from the same mast. ITV began transmitting in the late 60s, and this trend... Sorry. Camera's rolling. ITV began transmitting in the late 60s, and this 10 kilowatt transmitter was installed in 1971. Hmm. Camera's running. ITV began transmitting in the late 60s, and this 10 kilowatt transmitter was installed in 1971. By today's standards, it's both large and inefficient. Camera's rolling. ITV began transmitting in the late 60s, and this 10 kilowatt transmitter was installed in 1971. By today's standards, it's both large and inefficient. In 1982, Channel 4 began, and we could take advantage of the improved efficiency of more advanced transmitters. Almost, almost. Yeah, I was a bit slow. I yeah. thought I was leaving. 1982, where's, where's the script gone? I helped have a bit idea, didn't I? <laughs> In 1982, Channel 4 began, and we could take advantage of the improved efficiency of more advanced transmitters. Cut. Camera's rolling. In 1982, Channel 4 began, and we could take advantage of the improved efficiency of more advanced transmitters. These transmitters can be easily adapted to carry dual-channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at the television signal path through the station. Transmitters, yeah. Rolling. These transmitters can be easily adapted to carry dual-channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at the television signal path through the station. Coming. 
these transmitters can also be easily adapted to carry dual channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at these. These transmitters can be easily modified. Oh, God. Here we go. These transmitters can also be easily adapted to carry dual channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at the. These transmitters are. Oh, God. Sorry, sorry. Cameras rolling. Oh, all cameras rolling. These transmitters can also be easily adapted to carry dual channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at the television signal path through the station. These transmitters can also be easily adapted to carry dual channel sound, which is gradually being introduced. So let's take a closer look at the television signal path through the station. It's slipping away, isn't it? Times. Half a dozen times and it's gone. Drifts in there. Well, that was just a quick look at the technology we use at our transmitting stations. Our record of reliability means that much of what we do is seldom brought to the attention of viewers. But we hope that you now have a better idea of one aspect of our involvement in the transmission of independent television. Well, that was just a quick look at the technology we use at our transmitting stations. Our record of reliability means that much of what we do is seldom brought to the attention of viewers. But we hope you now have a better idea of one aspect of our involvement in the transmission of independent television. Well, that was just a quick look at the technology we use at our transmitting stations. Our record of reliability means that much of what we do is seldom brought to the attention of viewers. But we hope that you now have a better idea of one aspect of our involvement in the transmission of independent television. Well, that was just a quick look at Well, that was just a quick look at one aspect of our involvement in the transmission of independent television. Our record of reliability means that much of what we do is seldom brought to the attention of the viewer. But, 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 okay, but, that. the words are all rolling. Well, that was just a quick look at the technology we use at our transmitting stations. Our record of reliability means that much of what we do is seldom brought to the attention of viewers. But we hope you now have a better idea of one aspect of our involvement in the transmission of independent television. The audio and video signals are fed next to the first stage of the transmitter, known as the transmitter drive. This provides a suitable UHF signal for the final power amplifier signals the audio and video signals are fed next to the first stage of the transmitter known as the transmitter drive this provides a suitable UHF signal for the final power amplifier which uses klystroms
and so the drive provides UHF signals of around 10 watts for the inputs of the sound and vision price joints. These are wideband thermionic devices, which in our case operate at between 2 and 40 kilowatts. That is wrong, sorry. Because it's at, in our And so the UHF drive provides. Sorry. And so the drive provides UHF signals of around 10 watts for the inputs of the sound and vision klystrons. These are wideband thermionic devices, which in our case operate at output powers of between four. four. And so the drive provides UHF signals of around 10 watts for the inputs of the sound and vision klystrons. These are wideband devices, which in our case operate at output powers of between. Cut. And read is. And so the UHF drive provides. And so the drive provides UHF signals of around 10 watts for the inputs of the sound and vision klystrons. These are wideband thermionic devices, which in our case operate at between output powers. And so the drive provides UHF signals of around 10 watts for the inputs of the sound and vision klystrons. These are wideband thermionic devices, which in our case operated output powers of between 2 and 40 kilowatts. They are air and water cooled, and at the output end, around the collector, a boiler is situated in which demineralized water is evaporated by the heat generated in the klystron. This, is, this steam is then condensed back into liquid and recirculated and so hardly any water is actually consumed. They are air and water cooled, and at the output end, around the collector, a boiler is situated in which demineralized water is evaporated by the heat generated in the klystron. This steam is then condensed back into liquid and recirculated, and so hardly any water is actually consumed. In the case of a rebroadcast main station, there are two receivers to provide a baseband signal, video and audio. These are first processed by the program input equipment or PIE. Yes. Have a rolling. In the case of a rebroadcast main station, there are two receivers to provide a baseband signal, video and audio. These are first processed by the program input equipment or PIE. Rolling. In the case of a rebroadcast main station, there are two receivers to provide a baseband signal. These whole In the case of a rebroadcast main station, there are two receivers to provide a baseband signal, video and audio. These are first processed by the program input equipment or PIE. In the case of a rebroadcast main station, there are two receivers to provide a baseband signal, video and audio. These are then processed by the program input equipment or PIE. Oh, This therefore always has two separate inputs 
known as the A and the B. The audio is again connected to a jack field for the purpose of monitoring or repatching if a different route through the PIE is required during maintenance. This therefore always has two separate inputs, known as the A and the B. The audio is again connected to a jack field for the purpose of monitoring or repatching if a different route through the PIE is required during maintenance. The picture signal path is a bit more complicated because we have a very high specification for the performance of the vision transmitter. <laughs> yes, I'll try. It's a quick bit of action. From the video termination panel, the signal passes through the sync pulse detectors, which monitor the presence and quality of the incoming signal. Sorry, 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 sorry. From the video termination panel, the signal passes through the sync pulse detectors, which monitor the presence and quality of the incoming signal. Rolling. We also make extensive use of vertical interval test signals to check the performance of our transmission networks. We also make extensive use of a vertical interval test signal to check the performance of our transmission networks. This signal is added to two lines of the television waveform, which don't carry picture information. They're located at the beginning of the vertical scan, next to the Oracle teletext data lines. If the program input to the station is lost, we can transmit an apology caption. This originates from a caption generator in which a number of appropriate captions and a test card are digitally stored. If the program input to the station is lost, we can transmit an apology caption. This originates from a caption generator. Sorry. If the program input to the station is lost, we can transmit an apology caption. This originates from a caption generator in which a number of appropriate captions and a test card are digitally stored. In an earlier program, we looked at the routing of the television sound and picture signals from the station input to the output of the PIE, or program input equipment. <laughs> yes, well, not bad. Yeah. Eight out of ten. In an earlier program, we looked at the routing of the television sound and picture signals from the transmitting station input to the output of the PIE. Or Today, we follow their progress to the transmitting areas. Sorry. Today, we follow their progress to the transmitting areas. All our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status Right. All our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station's status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the transmitter controller. Okay. 
All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the transmitter controller. All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the station controller. Yeah. What a failure. Rolling. All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the station controller. Yeah, didn't do it again. Very difficult. Yeah. Rolling. All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the station controller. All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional engineering centers by the station controller. The audio and video signals are then fed to the transmitter and we will be following their progress in another program. Rolling. All of our transmitters are designed to run automatically. The station status is telemetered to one of our four regional operation centers by the station controller. The audio and video signals are then fed to the transmitter and we will be following their progress in another program. Before. Okay. Tape's rolling. The transmitter has to be switched off before a key can be released to gain access to the beam supply for the klystrons, which require up to 20 kilovolts DC at about 2 amps. Tape's rolling. The transmitter has to be switched off before a key can be released to gain access to the beam supply. Oh, okay. 
You can't do this. <laughs> it's got to go all the way down, otherwise you don't get the key out. At the top of the mast, there are usually two aerials, known as the upper and lower stack. vision and sound outputs from both transmitters in the case of a parallel station are fed to the feeder switching frame. At the top of the mast there are usually two aerials known as the upper and lower stack. At the top of the mast there are usually two aerials known as the upper and lower stack. Normally both aerials are in use, but it is possible to radiate a satisfactory service from only one of them, while maintenance is done on the other. Normally both aerials are in use, but it is possible to radiate...